Oh, Alan. Yes, we've done that. What do you yeah, want? Right. Listen, what are your views on acupuncture? I don't answer questions. Why? All right. Why should well, I? Well, I'll, I'll rephrase it. I heard you talking to Victor earlier. And I have can, a... can I just stop you a second, yeah, Marilyn? Yeah, we yeah. have a major problem in that I can't understand what you're saying because your radio is on in the background, so get someone to turn right. it off. Turn the wireless off, David, please. There we turn go. Turn it off. Thank you. Yeah. Turn it off altogether. Yes. David, do as your mother says, <laughs> you little prat. <laughs> right. Acupuncture. I heard you talking to yes. Victor earlier. Just I a minute, a Marilyn. 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 Go on. Have you always had a trouble with your son? <laughs> he is a big problem to me. Yes. Turn the well, radio will off. Will you tell him to turn it off? I was right. flipping around the area. That's, Anything else? That's, right. That's, we've, we've made progress. It. We've right. cracked it. I have a similar problem with smoking. Not in such a way that I have to go anywhere and be sorted out, but acupuncture. Have you ever had a problem where you need to consult somebody to get it sorted out? Smoking, drinking... Well, the answer to your question, have I ever had a problem where I needed something to get sorted out, is obviously yes. Right. But it wasn't smoking, it wasn't well, some not. habit I had. I've always managed to avoid habits like smoking, drinking. I did bite my nails for a long time and did I managed... Did you really? Did you keep the habit yourself? Yes. Well, you're wonderful. Well, I know I'm wonderful. <laughs> So what do you think about acupuncture? I really want to kick the habit, but I can't Let me do tell it. you, Marilyn, if you want to stop smoking... Go on. ...that means that you do not want to smoke. Right. So why do you light a cigarette? I know, but I have... Answer that question. I have no that willpower. Is, it's, it's nothing to do with... It's Marilyn, like, Marilyn, I'm on. sorry. Go on. You don't need willpower. You do, do you know, or you how do. Much, well, listen a moment. How much willpower do I need to not put my hand in the fire? Right, okay. Well, well, come on. Yeah, How much that, willpower does that, that require? It's not an addiction. I'm sorry. Smoking what? is. It's like drinking. I'll it's... tell you a tale, Marilyn. Go on. When senior service went up to one and tenpence eightney... Good, great, yeah. ..my father said, if they go up to one and eleven, I'm packing it in. Right. And they went up to one and eleven, and they said, well... That's it. He's never smoked since. Now, that's another thing. You see, men... It is not... No, I'm sorry. Men haven't got more willpower have. or less willpower. They, they, they have, have not. They have. They, they we, have. They really have. They just if we're going it. to get into the emotional strength of the human being, allow me to tell you, as far as I'm Go concerned, on. the female of the species is considerably more emotionally stable. Really? Considerably more. Do without really any believe? shadow of a doubt. Well, I must be lacking something somewhere well, along the line. that's up to you to decide. But just remember, when your husband's got a problem, he brings it to you. Mm -hmm. When you've got a problem, you've got a problem. I have, yeah. And I want to kick it. And I can't. Then convince yourself that you do not wish to smoke and you'll have no trouble. If Sally Moon can stop without yeah. acupuncture and God knows what yeah. else, then anyone can stop. Fair comment. Yeah, I can't well, really argue you. with that, can I? But allow me to tell you that acupuncture has helped others. Right. That's all I wanted to know. All right. Thank you for your time. Bye. How do, John? Goodbye, John. How do, Steve? Hello, Al. Yeah. All right. I'd just like to say that my girlfriend, my girlfriend's 13, and I'm 20. I'm 21 in June. And I don't see why we shouldn't be allowed to have sex. Because it would be possibly physically dangerous for your girlfriend. But you don't care about that, do you? No. Good. Well, you should. How do, Margaret? Three. Hello, Margaret. Hello. Hello. Yeah, hello. What do you want, Margaret? Um, anything. Well, I haven't got anything. How do, Adrian? Hello, Alan. I'd like to talk about Mary Whitehouse. Go ahead. Well, I think it's stupid the way that she dictates... Well, not exactly dictates that says what people should and should not watch, especially when it's young children watching films, when it should surely be up to um, the parents whether the children should be allowed to watch that film or not. Adrian, do you think Mary Whitehouse should not say those things? I don't think she should not say them. Well, why are you complaining that she does say them, then? Well, it's just the fact that she's always going on and on what are good for other people. When yes. it is up to them to decide for themselves. Indeed, but are you suggesting that she should not make her remarks? No. So you agree with her right to make the remark? Yeah. All you're saying is that she is wrong? I'm 
I'm not saying she's wrong. Well, what are you saying then? You seem to be saying, yes, she should, if she so desires, make the remarks. She has done. So what are you complaining about? Well, it's just, um, uh, I don't know how to put this. I've noticed. Yeah. Uh, well, you sort of got me, haven't you? Absolutely. No, oh, you prat. No, you are. Um. Good night. Oh, nice. <laughs> I'll do, Dave. Um, all right, Al, I want to talk about, I want to come back to the point you made about uh, rugby league and rugby union. I didn't make any. Go on. Because you said that the rugby league and rugby union are different, but basically they're the same game with mm. just a few modifications. They're not. The rules are ent their laws no, just are entirely different. There's just no. There's just a few modifications. There aren't a few modifications. Yeah. There's two extra players in one game. Yeah. The principle of the game is similar, indeed identical, in that the objective is to gain sufficient territory for one of your players to carry the ball over the opponent's territory. But that's the same in war. No, but... Um, that was the same at the Somme. But the Rugby League and Rugby Union were the same, but the Rugby League broke away. Um, excuse me a moment, Dave. Mm. By saying that they were the same, you are conceding that they're not the same. I know, but they broke away a few... But uh, just a moment, Dave. You started off by saying they were the same virtually. Now you're telling me they're different. I know, I just said a few modifications. It's not a few modifications at all. The whole basis of the game is different. It's not. It's just a few modifications. Well, go on, then. Them get, get Explain more. the modifications. Um, first of all, they have fewer players on the pitch. Well, which are we talking about? Uh, the rugby league. Go on. And secondly, there's not as much kicking and there's more passing in the game. Well, first of all, which has got the most passing? The rugby league. Well, I, I would question that. <laughs> I would question that. There is more play, um, play in the backs than there is in rugby union because there's more kicking and more forward play. Allow me to tell you that you're probably wrong there. The application of those players is entirely different. Entirely different. I know. For example, why is there more kicking in Rugby Union? I don't know, ask the players. Well, I am one of the players, or were, of both games, incidentally. Well, it seems to be more tactical in Rugby Union. Oh, I see. So, the tactics of the game are different? Yeah. I see. So, now we've got a game that has different numbers of players, different laws, and different tactics. And you tell me they're the same. I know, but can I just get back to my original point? Well, feel free. Because I said that, um, that the, uh, when a rugby league player goes on a trial with a, with a uh, rugby union player goes on a trial with another club, and um, he's punished for it. And Not the, when he goes on trial with another club. Uh, he is. Not when he goes on trial with another club. With the rugby league club. Ah, well, he didn't say another you didn't say a rugby league club, you said another club. If somebody from Oral chose to go on trial with the grasshoppers, I'm sure he wouldn't be welcome when he went back to Oral, but he wouldn't be punished for it. We've been on trial again with, uh, say, Wigan, rugby mm, league. Indeed. See, and this isn't happening in any other sport. Well, they are two separate sports, controlled by two separate bodies. Now, I asked you a question before that you were unable to answer. Unfortunately, you probably are unable to answer it still, but I must put the question. Why should the rules and laws of rugby union accommodate those who do not play the game at all? How come it happens in, um, so it is irrelevant how come. It, Absolutely it, it, irrelevant. Yeah. The rugby union was offended when the rugby league chose, as you rightly said, to break away. And it passed a law saying that those who chose to play as adults, and they define that as somebody over the age of, or somebody having reached the age of 18, they said, once you have reached the age of 18, you may choose your code, but if you wish to play union, you can only have ever played union. It's just snobbery. Well, you may see it as that, if that is your immature way of considering things, and fine. Because uh, the rugby union players don't like to see their players going to rugby league and losing all the players. Well, first of all, they're not losing all their players. Well, they there are far more people playing rugby union every weekend than rugby league. Oh, because they're only scared. That if scared? They, they, if they have a well, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what, Dave. I'm, I, I, I'm on reasonably close terms with Billy Beaumont. 
Now, I'm prepared to arrange a meeting with you and Billy Bowman, and maybe Fran Cotton, and one or two others of and that Alex. ilk. Yes, so that you can say to them, Hey, you, you're scared. Scared? No. So that you, you said they were scared. You said it hurt you. You said Billy Bowman's scared. Fran Cotton's scared. All these bloody gorillas that play for the lions, they're all scared. They're frightened. <laughs> Terrified. They'll eat you, you silly pellet. How do Joyce. Good evening, Alan. Hello. I'd like to talk about people who break into old people's houses. What do you want to say about them? Well, I think that the sentence that they get is not enough. And I think that they should be put into a room with the victim's family. Why? Well, the sentence doesn't know good, so maybe a good eye enough for family does. Might do him any good. That's barbaric. Well, I don't think so. That's just my opinion. Well, it is your opinion, but the course of action you advocate is barbaric. Well, the sentence is doing them no good, is it? Well, the answer to that is possibly not in some cases, and possibly yes in others. Beating seven colours of the stuff that's good for the roses out of them is unlikely to do the trick either. All that's going to do is to turn our legal process into one not dissimilar than that that they have in the likes of Saudi Arabia, that our government and our individuals are always throwing their arms up in horror about. So do you not think that's the right thing to do? I think it is foul, disgusting, and you ought to be ashamed of yourself for even considering it, to be honest. Well, I don't. I well, obviously you don't, but you asked me my opinion. I gave it to you. If you don't like it, that's your problem. Same to you. Indeed. Hello, Mary. Hello. I, I just phoned to call Ray Allen and tell you this. I'm off to Chicago tomorrow, right? I'm listening to your program. I am really happy that I live in England. And why are you going to Chicago? I, I'm only going for a month's holiday, but when I come back, I am so happy. There's no health service there. There's no help for anybody who needs help. Right then, Mary. Well, we're glad to hear it. You know what I mean? I do, yes. When I listen to you and I listen to the griping of different people, I think they should live somewhere where there's something to gripe about. Well, we all live somewhere where there's something to gripe about, Mary. Yeah, but, but I, go, I went about two years ago and I noticed a lot of problems in America, you know, with the young people. Here... And, um... We've got problems with our young people, Mary. Yeah, no, I'm sure the young bull, old bull problem has been around since time began, I'm sure. Yeah. Indeed, if you believe the Bible, Adam had a bit of trouble with Cain and Abel. Yeah, yeah, So it's been around a while, hasn't it? Here, with the help we get, all I'm saying is the young people here need maybe more leisure centres where they don't have to pay to go into them. Right then. Well, thank you for your opinion, Mary. Yeah. And enjoy Chicago. Uh, not really. I'll be happy when I come back. <laughs> okay, well, don't go and, then. And to listen to you. There's not many people like you around the place. <laughs> okay. Ta -ra, love. I mean that. God bless you. Uh, thank you very much. I know there's not many like me. I'm just wondering whether it's good or bad. Hello, Tina. Hello there, Alan. <laughs> I would like to complain about Maggie Thatcher. I know she's not a wonderful woman, but it's just who does she think she is? I mean, I'm sure she, she like knows who she is. What exactly do you wish to complain about, Tina? Complain? Uh, well, take i.e. she was coming up to Eastern Power Station to visit, so they painted all the bus shelters, just especially for her. I don't see why they do it, because she's just a normal person like we are. Well, Tina, I, I don't suppose that Mrs Thatcher told them to paint the bus shelters. I know, but... Well, who are you complaining about, Mrs Thatcher or the person that well, took that decision? Well, why did they do it for her? Well, I've no idea, but you can hardly complain about Mrs Thatcher by saying somebody else decided to paint the bus shelters. She didn't paint them, she didn't give the order to paint them, she didn't decide to paint them. You can't blame her for that. You want to complain about Mrs Thatcher, perhaps you ought to complain about something she's done or not done. Well, she just... I don't know. I mean, well, if you I... don't know, Tina, don't waste me time. Get off. I'll do Robin. Hello, Alan. I'll do Robert, sorry. Yeah. Robin. Um, I was sitting in this bar last night, Alan. Which bar? Uh, in this a pub. Bar? I see, in go on. Pub. And there was this fella sitting at a table, and um, next to him was a big pile of tar and a big pile of grit. Heard it. And, uh, he I've heard it. Have you? Mm. What, what's, what's orange? It's got six legs, four wheels, and goes up and down a lamppost. Don't know, okay. I'll do to nobody, but we'll be with Keith after the break. 
Ow. Carpets, Easter sale now on. Open Bank Holiday Monday. Hundreds of rolls to choose from. Prices from only 50 pence a square yard at the Carpet Supermarket, Fletcher Road, Preston. Blinking egg death. Why don't we get a decent radio to match this flash car? Well, that one cost an arm and a leg, but it's never been much good. Yeah, you need to contact West Orton Car Radio, mate. They've got superb systems by Blaupunk and Panasonic. Hey, and they've got the Blaupunk D stock range at less than half the normal price. None of this distortion like with one of them. Blaupunk what? Blaupunk. It's German, isn't it? I thought you were supposed to be brainy. Hey, you can also get electric windows, vehicle alarms and car phones fitted by West Horton Car Radio. Oh, find the right station with West Horton Car Radio, Church Street, West Horton. Phone West Horton 814 229 before you crack up. I'm here at the Hazelmere Industrial Estate, just one and a half miles from the M6 to follow up reports about. Excuse me, sir, what's the rush? It's the Hazelmere Estate. It's ideal for my business. 36,000's already gone, and there's only three units left of 14, 28, and 42,000 square feet. Hmm, you better be fast on yours, then. Eh? On what? On your feet. Oh, absolutely. If you want to pick up some square feet at the Hazelmere Estate, you've got to be on your toes. Talk to Derek Wade and Waters on Preston 323 666 and get your business on the right footing. Twenty-six minutes to two. We're here till two o'clock, of course, to be followed by Derek Webster. And we were talking to Tina a little earlier, who's about to gallivant around and across the Atlantic to go to Chicago. Well, we can't send you that far, but we can send you halfway across the Channel. Indeed, more than halfway to the island of Jersey, because that's the jackpot prize, and it's your turn in April if you join us on a Sunday morning and take part in the competition, who knows, you may even win that trip to Jersey. If you want to take part in the writing competition, if you win that, you get a free go at the jackpot game. But the writing competition is, in which television series has the character called Moxie become an Irishman? If you know the answer to that, put it on a postcard, send it to me. And if you're the first correct answer out of the hat on Saturday morning, you win the top three albums and a free go at that jackpot prize of a weekend in Jersey this spring. How do Keith? Hello, Alan. Uh, Joe, earlier on, there was a lad there talking about he, went, he was going with a younger, underage girl. Well, uh, I'm a lad, and I'm going with an overage girl. Like, she's, she, and I'm only 14. And uh, Keith? Yeah? You're not allowed on this phone-in until you're 16. Hello, Ian. Oh, Alan. Uh, are you allowed on? A couple of minutes ago, prattling about rugby league, rugby union. Yes. And he said you'd like to introduce him to Bill Beaumont and Frank Cotton. <laughs> well, yes. uh, I've known Bill Beaumont for about 30 years. And he's a away. gentleman. If you, if you can get them together, can I come and watch? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm just about the same size as Bill, and I won't I, tell him for his 30 skirt. I told Billy he was... I, I said to Billy one day, I, I was on the radio, and I... You know how you say, if... Some people say, if, if you do that, because they don't believe you can do it, they say, if you do that, I will show my bum in Wooly's window. <laughs> well, of course, I've, I've never been one to to say things that I wouldn't then back up, you see, particularly on the radio. So I said to this guy, if you do that, I will tell Billy Bowman that he's ugly. <laughs> but then he already knows. And he was in the office the next day, and he said, I want a word with you. <laughs> but I'll tell you a story about Billy Bowman that is absolutely true. As you know, he used to play for Fylde. And he'd suffered an injury some, some years ago now, before he was captain of the Lions, I think. But I was playing for Ormskirk's third team, who play Files second, no, play Files fourth team. And of course, they're, they're their fourth best, so they're, they're not particularly brilliant, although they usually manage to give us a, a tough game in the third team, because they're a step better than us, as it were. And we arrived, and the fourth team come trundling out, and Bill Bowman was amongst them. And we all went, ah! <laughs> and panicked. Fortunately, he was recovering from injury and was actually just putting the fear of God up us, because he was going for a run, really. <laughs> <laughs> so, Billy can be mean. I mean, I, I was about six years old. He brought, hit him over the head with a nice lolly, and he knocked me unconscious for it. <laughs> I think he, I think you deserved and, uh, it. He's, 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 a, he's one of the most gentle people I've ever met. Oh, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to scrum down against him. Uh, but I'm, I'm glad he's come back to his own town. He's not stayed up in Blackpool. Absolutely. 
Anyway, ta ra. I'll do, Malcolm. Roses are red, violets are blue, most poems rhyme. Not this one. We've done that one tonight. No, we haven't. We have? No, we haven't. Somebody did that one? No, they didn't. They did? No, they didn't. Oh, I remember it. They didn't. They did? They didn't. All right, ta ra. Bye bye. They did. How do Doreen? Hello? Yep. Yeah. It's about smoking. What about it? Well, uh, you can give it up. I can have smoke for years. And I have a shopkeeper and also Red Rose Radio to thank for that. You see, when we moved into a new house, our wireless, it broke. And being pensioners, we couldn't afford, you know, a modern one. So we decided we'd have to give up smoking to buy one. And we did. And we got a very nice one, a rack one and that. And uh, you can give up smoking. And we've decided we still stop smoking and we do save a lot of money with it. I bet you do. Well we done, do Dory. We save a lot of money. We save over £21 a week. <gasps> My word. Yes. And so we're saving up now for a nice holiday hey. after it's probably September. Smashing. And the lady that say about acupuncture... I don't know if it works or not, but the four mates, when I was younger, went to have it done to stop smoking, and it never worked on them. Okay. okay. Well, thanks very much, Dorian. Enjoy Bye. your holiday. Thank you You've very much. You've certainly earned Bye. it. Bye. How do Paul? I'm Bedford on Red Rose, sits in a chair as he picks his nose. He won't talk about football because he's not at all small, because he's a bad bastard. It doesn't rhyme, Joe. How do John? My name is Michael Caine. <laughs> <laughs> you little liar, not your name's John. Know, hey, not a lot of people do, do they? Your name's John, you don't fool me. Oh, all right then, bye bye. Ta ra. How do Ken? Hello, Alan. I'd yes. like to talk about drug smuggling. Go on. Okay, well, as you know, time flies by when you're a survivor of a train, speeding into Trumpton with a cargo of cocaine. I get high on the path of a plane, touching down in Cambridge and stand out of my brain. On the this is rubbish, it's so gibberish. Kay. Gibberish. How do Biff? Hello, I'd like to uh, express the importance of uh, banning smoking in uh, the importance of areas. what? Pardon? The importance of? Uh, banning smoking in enclosed public areas. Well, go on. Well, I think that if someone's in the same room as someone who's smoking, they can uh, get bronchitis or uh, lung cancer. Yes. Well, do you think that's right? Do I think what's right? That they can? Or that, that they, they can should smoke be... in their enclosed areas? Well, it's... you were expressing your opinion. Yeah, but I think they shouldn't. So well, you've said so. What? You said you'd like to express your opinion. Yeah, I have. And you have done? Yeah. Well, what's the problem? Well, why don't you ban it then? Well, I don't know why they don't ban it. I'm not the government. Why don't you ask the government? Because I can't. Well, That's why I'm why... expressing my opinion. Well, you've expressed it. You don't need to ask a question in order to express your opinion. You asked it. You, you stated your opinion. That was it. And so? So oh, right. yeah, there's another thing as well. You said the time was uh, 12 o'clock and it was 1 o'clock something. Well, it's... it's so you're wrong. wrong. You, got, you got it wrong. Well, I frequently get the time wrong. Well, good. Oh, I'm glad you're pleased. Thanks. How do Cliff? Sorry, Craig. Greg. All right, Greg. That's better. Uh, what day is it you come down to shop up? What day? You come down on Wednesday night to a pub. Um. In about hang, three weeks. Hang on, hang on, hang on. I've got all these things written down somewhere. I think it's Wednesday the 23rd of April. Is that in three weeks? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, we did have that joke before, by the way. We did what? Do you know that joke about uh, roses are red, violets are blue and all that? I know we did. He's I a know. He's, he was having us on. Yep. Anyway, the 23rd Ta of April. Ta-ra. Ta-ra. How do Greg? Oh, I've just done Greg. How do Dave? Hello, Dave. He's not there anyway, Alice. Hello, Stephen. Perhaps we're getting them wrong. Hang on a minute. Hello, Stephen. Who are you? 
Oh, I give up. I'm getting an headache now. Have we got Stephen yet? Hello? Hello? Oh, we've got you. What do you want? Hello? Why didn't you answer first off? Pardon? Why didn't you answer when I first asked you? Sorry. Not be sorry. Tell me why you didn't answer. I didn't hear you. Well, pay attention in future. What do you want? Can I talk about the Rushmore project? Can you or may you? May I? What's the Rushmore project? Well, we've not heard of it. Tell us what it is. Well, it's a, it's a project. Obviously. In America. To carve Regan's face onto Mount Rushmore. Go on. Well, there's a lot of con controversy about it in uh, America. Well... And I thought you might... Uh, why should I be bothered? Well, I thought you might... Uh, well, what do you want to say about it, Stephen? Well, I don't think it should be allowed. Why not? Well, it's, uh, it's going to ruin Mount Rushmore, isn't it? Well, it can't be that pretty now, can it, really? I mean... <laughs> You know, they did all right. They've got George Washington and them other three fellas. They're on well, mountains. Why shouldn't Reagan be? Why not? Well... Well, what? He's going to spoil it, isn't it? Well, it's, it's spoiled the one that George Washington's on, but it's it's still there. It's doing all right. Well... Well, why should it bother you? You don't live in America. Yeah, but it's a, it's a national monument in a national park. Well, he's going to put a national face on it. Yeah, well, I don't think it should be allowed anyway. Well, what difference does it make to you, Stephen? Where do you live? Lancashire. Lancashire? Well, worry about the mountains in Lancashire, for crying out loud. ta -ra. Hello, Jimmy. Are you all right? Yeah, all right, Alan. I was just going to ring you up to back you up on that argument you had with that fellow who said uh, roses are red and all that. That would a second fellow and then somebody come on and said... Oh, well, there you go. Right. Thank you very much, Jimmy. Yes, Sal. Ta -ra. How do, Robert? Hello, Alan. Hello. You've got a usurper. A usurper? You have. Go on. And I heard him earlier on tonight on another radio station. Is he in Piccadilly? Listen, yes. And you know something? He's not a usurper. He's not good enough. Listen, when he starts swearing at him, when the, when the customer start, the punter starts swearing at him, he gives him three minutes to stop. So? And another thing, he's beginning to sound like you and all. Well, of course he he's is. Trying to, he's trying to trick your voice. Uh, Robert, you must come to terms with the fact that when you're at the top of the tree, all the people at the bottom do everything that you do in order to get there. Yes, but I thought I'd... Listen, Alan. What? I thought I'd got Red Rose Radio. Well, you were wrong. I know. But I you got realize, an imposter. I didn't realise until I was so polite was to give somebody who just called him a, a pillock, he said, I'll give you a, a few minutes. He said, uh, I'm not very pleased with the language you use, you know. <laughs> well, I suggest that if you... And then I realised you weren't telling me anything. Fine. Well, Robert, you've now got the real thing. Good night. Yes, isn't it? <laughs> Good Lord. Hello, Stephen. Hello. Hello, Alan. Uh, I've got a problem. I, I've been waiting to go into hospital for ages, and uh, for about... Six months now, and um, I, 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 they don't seem to be moving. You know what I mean? Well, they're very I'm difficult going. to move. Hospitals are quite heavy. Oh, nice one, Alan. Yeah, but um, I, I haven't been able to get in there. You know, I've, every time I went down and complained, they just said, "Oh, wait." I see. Well, yeah. You better wait then, aren't you? No, but I've, I've, I've sent letters in in that, Alan. Yeah. And it's, you know. It's, a, it's about me leg. I've done me knee ligaments in. And it's Have you? Hard to walk. Well, limp then. How do Fred? Hello, Alan. Roses are red. Oh, Violets yeah. are blue. Who bloody cares? I don't, do you? <laughs> no, not in a word. Cheers, <laughs> Thank up. you very much. Hello, Chris. Can't you say to David, I'm <laughs> No, you can't. Hello, Liam. Hello, Alan. Yeah? I want to talk about naturism. Go on. Well, I think the only people who object to it are men with little willies and women with little tits. Well, that's not exactly true, is it? Have you ever been in a naturist reserve? Yeah. Where? I don't know. Then you're a liar. How do Peter? Hello, Alan. I'd like to talk about the television series called Airwolf. Called what? Airwolf. Whatever is that? It's a helicopter. 
Oh, I see. I'd like to complain about like, some of the things on it. When its weapons come out, they always show you them close up, and that's to avoid, because the weapons aren't in it. Because on the wheel section, there's just no room at all for machine guns to come out of it. Well, why are you bothered by that? Because the Korski don't make helicopters that good, and he's still fat at me, ha! <laughs> Well, all you've proved so far, Peter, is that you're an absolute jerk. Come here. Hello, David. Oh, dear. Uh, all, I'm, all I need to say is that, regards your comments about uh, Rugby League and Rugby Union, I don't think that Mr Schofield, Edwards, Fox and Fairburn would be too tough to be compared to Mr Beaumont and other people of lesser ilk. Well, it's a matter of opinion whether they're greater or lesser. Well, I don't want to say they're lesser or better. I just tend to think that in comparative sports they might have one or two problems. Do you not agree? I'm not sure what you mean by in comparative sports they might have one or two problems. Will you explain that statement? Well, I don't think Mr Beaumont would be very uh, compatible to rugby union or uh, to rugby league, and I don't think Mr... Um, Neither do I. I don't think either of them would be as... Well, possibly they could be, but it's unlikely that a rugby union player would be very good at rugby league there are exceptions to that rule of course of course and the reverse is the case the, the, the one that i mentioned of course mr fairburn was probably one of the, the scots best at fullback and turned out to be one of the best fullbacks at rugby league you know. indeed but the two positions of fullback do actually have a lot of similarities in the game yeah mr Bezek, it's nice to talk about somebody that knows a little bit about rugby union and rugby league well i've played both oh, well i'll tell you what i've dated a well, I think it would be great if you and I were playing against each other. <laughs> well, it probably <laughs> would, but it would probably mean that you'd be on the winning side, David. Well, I, I don't know about I had an amazing knack of not being. Yeah, well, I, I tell you what, Alan, I, I, I enjoy your programme. Well, good. Yes, but I tend to think you should enjoy the sport as well as it's supposed to be made out. In what sport? Well, you sometimes deride our cricketers, for example. Well, they're crap. Oh, I don't think that should be so sad as crap. Well, why shouldn't I say it when they're proving it? Well, how can they prove it? I want to say when they... they are proving it. They get thrashed by all sorts. They're crap. Who, who, who's the all sorts? The licorice well, all sorts, do you mean? Well, at the moment... Can I say the licorice all sorts? I'm allowed to say that on your programme. Say it if you like, as long yeah. as you don't mention Bassett's. Well, the only, pro the only team that's been be able to beat us over the last two or three seasons is the West Indies. So? So, does that not mean that we are probably the, probably the world's best number two? The world's best number two? And if we approved it, the world... Do you mean the world's second best? Well, if that, if we approved... Second best, in, second best in a game that's supposed to be for winners is not good enough. It's good enough for me if... if well, we, you enjoy it then. If we end up as... You enjoy it then. If we end if up... If you're happy being second best, you carry on. If we end up being number two in the World Cup... For one thing, I think what World be, Cup? The World Cup at football. I think we don't talk about tough. football on this program. Oh, sorry, I won't talk about football. Good. Uh, but I tend to think that when you're talking about cricket, when you come second in a race, how many people say you've won it? Well, there's not very really many. I don't think. Oxford, I don't think any of them say you've won it. I don't think Oxford would come playing after winning for ten years in a row and then finishing second in the first. Well, I, I, I'm not interested in what. Russia or us or whatever it was you said. <laughs> I really don't care. As far as I'm concerned, at the moment, England's cricket team is a waste of space. Mm -hmm. And when next year, when I'm at uh, India and New Zealand, you'll be saying the entire opposite. Well, no, I won't be saying the entire opposite, but I'd like to see them win against New Zealand and India. We they shall will remain, do. we shall wait and see. They shall will we do. not? I shall be there for one of the test matches to find out, for sure. Well, would you like to take me along as your guest? No. Why not? Why should I? Well, I tend to think you and I have a good time because our talk is intelligent. Well, I can guarantee having a good time with the person I would go with, so why should I put yeah. that at risk <laughs> to go with a Geordie? Well, uh, how do you know I'm a Geordie? Oh, come on. Uh, what well, makes you think I'm a Geordie? It's the twang. Well, at least you don't give me some stick the way you do the Scousers. Well, no, but I used to give the Geordies stick when I was up there. Yeah, I don't blame you. <laughs> anyway, it's been nice talking to you. Thank you very much, Alan. Bye-bye. Bye. My education has moved forward not one iota. Hello, Peter. Hello. Uh, I'd just like to bring up the points about... Um, I, I, live in a, I live in a certain area where um, where we've got the Scouse accents. And um, uh, when we go up to Wigan, um, the, pl uh, the police there are very biased against us if we're going out for a drink. Um, 
Like Why do you go to Wigan down, for a drink? Down. Why do you go to Wigan for a drink? No, because you, you know. The Why do you go to Wigan for a drink? Why do I go for Wig to Wigan for a drink? I asked you first. Because um, it's different. You just like uh, go different places, don't you? Meeting different. Well, people. I'm asking you. You, you. If you do, yes, fine. Yeah. That's why. I, I prefer. I prefer going around and mingling around and meeting different people rather than staying on the own. Uh, fine, we've established that, Peter. We've, we've uh, when I go out, that. when I go out for a drink up there, um, most of the time that I go up, I've stopped going up now because of it. But uh, most of the time that I go up, um, I have a lot of hassle of uh, of of uh, you know, like police officers and that. Well, I'm, how do they know you're a scouser? When I'm, you way, when I'm on my way home, right? How do they know you're a scouser until you speak? No, and that's what I mean. Once they speak to How do you know say, you're a scouser until don't. you speak? They don't. So, so you're telling me that the police in Wigan stop everybody? No, I'm just saying... The they police, just stop you? The police Do they Wigan, just stop you? The police in Wigan Do they just stop, stop you? People. They stop certain people. Which yeah. people? Uh, well... Which people? What do you mean, which people? Well, you said they stop certain people. Which ones? They, they stop people that... Um, yeah. If I'm, let's just say I'm on my way home. Well, Peter, how do the police know you're a scouser? How do the police know that I'm a scouser? Do why do you repeat all the questions, no, what Peter? I'm saying is, what Peter, I'm saying Peter, why do you repeat the question? Would you I've like to been, answer I've the been, question? I've been out for a drink. Peter, yeah. I've, I understand the question. I asked it. Now, one of the things that happens in conversations is one side asks the questions oh. and the other side answers. They may not do that in Liverpool, I don't know, but that's what we do up here. Now, I was the one that asked the question, so you repeating it doesn't stand as an answer. So I'll ask it again and try to answer it this time. Why, how do the police know you're a Scouser? They don't. They don't? No. So it's not Scousers they're picking on, because no. they don't know no, you're a Scouser. No. Let me so explain. your statement... That, well, let me explain. Well, yes, I'll right. let you explain. I'll ask you again. Twice. Twice. I've been Twice. on my way home in yes. a car. In a car, right? yes. And I've just been pulled over, and I've just, uh, it's, I've just been asked a simple question like, where are you going, lads? And, well, like, who's in the car? And well, Peter, like that, that happens to but me. Once, but that happens to me. Are, yeah, but they're all right with us until they hear our accents, and then that's when they start saying, like, get out the car, we want to see it, yeah? I see. Well, I suggest in future, Peter, you say, hey, I'm going one, man. How do John... Hi. I'd just like to say to all the smokers who argue that they've got the right to smoke in public, their smoke gets all over my hair, all over my clothes, and it makes me smell like them. How would they like half a pint of lager every now and again? How would they like it if I went out one night and a couple of pints of lager, walked up to one of them and pissed all over them? I don't know how they'd like it. I, I very much doubt that they would like it at all, but of course... It's the same thing, though. Well, it I isn't. It's second-hand smoke blowing all over me. Well, OK, it's second-hand smoke, but it's not actually the body's natural excreta. No, I mean, not natural. It's worse, isn't it? It's not natural. You say it's, it's worse, than anything. You say it's worse. Fine. I won't cause them cancer. Or bronchitis. No, it, you, depending on how much you've had to drink, it may well drown them. Ruin their shoes. Ta -ra. Ta -ra. Dave, our final caller this evening. How do you? I'll do well then. I'd like to tell you a joke. Oh, God. What's the difference between a duck? <laughs> Go away, you mucky fowl. Foul, foul creature. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm you. sorry. So tell you. No. No, 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 no. I've heard a lot of these jokes, and I'm not having that one on the radio. It's four minutes to two, time for a little breaky pause, and then, ah, yes, a final tune to take us out of the show. Carpets, Easter sale, now on. Open Bank Holiday Monday. Hundreds of rolls to choose from. Prices from only 50 pence a square yard at the Carpet Supermarket, Fletcher Road, Preston. I'm here at the Hazelmere Industrial Estate, just one and a half miles from the M6, to follow up reports about... Uh, excuse me, sir, what's the rush? It's the Hazelmere Estate. It's ideal for my business. 36,000's already gone, and there's only three units left of 14, 28, and 42,000 square feet. Hmm, you better be fast on yours, then. Eh? On what? On your feet. Oh, absolutely. If you want to pick up some square feet at the Hazelmere Estate, you've got to be on your toes. Talk to Derek Wade and Waters on Preston 323 666 and get your business on the right footing. Alan Bessie.
that's it for another night. It's very nearly two o'clock. Danny Webster with you, of course, two till six. I'll be back with you tonight at ten. Till then, have yourselves a grand day. And don't be fooled too many times. See you tonight at ten. To The two o'clock news. This is Steve Allen. Loyalist gangs have gone on the rampage in a fresh outbreak of violence in Northern Ireland. Catholic homes were stoned in Lisbon, and the families of two policemen in Craigavon were forced to flee after their houses were attacked. In Belfast, cars, buses and vans have been hijacked and set on fire. The trouble erupted after a day of clashes between Protestants and police in Portadown, which has left nearly 40 people injured. Three are in a serious condition in hospital. They're believed to have been hit by plastic bullets fired by police at the height of the rioting. Experts are still trying to pinpoint the cause of the blaze which gutted a wing of Hampton Court Palace. As they sifted through the debris, the Queen arrived with Princess Margaret and Prince Charles to survey the damage. Her body, believed to be that of 86-year-old Lady Gale, has already been removed. Lindsay Taylor reports. It's disastrous. Was how Hampton Court official Gerald Drayton described the charred remnants of finest architecture. You just can't rebuild that, ever. And the task of trying? Another cathedral job multi-million pounds, several years of work. The Environment Secretary, Kenneth Baker, says his department will pay for it. So we've got to restore these galleries. It's a big job. We've got the craftsmen who can do it. Meanwhile, staff like Fred Allen, who helped save the paintings, are still getting over the shock. First thing in the morning, you, you get out, you don't expect to go into a room full of smoke. So too is the Queen and the Royal Family. A Rolls-Royce has been involved in a head-on collision with a Datsun car in Clwyd, North Wales, leaving three people dead and three seriously injured. All six victims were in the Datsun. Barristers will make their own legal history from today by taking industrial action over a pay claim. They want up to 40% more for handling legal aid cases, but the government's offering only five. So the barristers say they'll refuse to handle legal aid cases where fees aren't agreed in advance, and they've even been muttering about strike action. Barrister Anne Blackburn says they can earn as little as £25 a day on legal aid cases. We are only talking about legal aid, and I should make it clear here that, as you say, the barristers who are earning hundreds of thousands of pounds, and there are a few that do, it does not affect them in any way. We are here talking about criminal legal aid. We're talking about people who are paid from the state. Drug users are being warned by police they could be snorting death if they've bought cyanide, believing it was cocaine. The alert follows the death of a man in Chesterfield after taking a lethal dose of the chemical, and it's thought he could have passed on some of the substance. A Euro MP is calling for all wines to carry lists of ingredients on the labels following the deaths of ten Italians who drank poisoned wine. Edward Macmillan Scott claims many people are unwittingly drinking dangerous wine and have no idea of the risks they're taking. Many people now drink wine in boxes, and while it's a perfectly wholesome product, if drunken in moderation, uh, people who drink rather too much of it won't only get pickled, they'll get poisoned, because the wine contains chemicals, preservatives, which are in themselves poisonous. Independent Radio News.